All right, guys, today we're talking about how to utilize APIs in augmented reality. Okay, so today what we're gonna do is we're gonna take Unity, take servers, and figure out how we can bring them together through augmented reality. That is taking data that's in real time or via an API, bringing it into Unity itself and displaying that through an augmented reality display. Whether that's utilizing the information to dictate something that's showing or actually literally showing it to the screen. But we're gonna go through firstly building the server side, building the Unity side and bringing those two together so that we have one succinct system together. So let's get started through the server code. Okay, so for this project, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be trying to make a call to the server to get some information from the server to show in an augmented reality. Now this specific example we're going to go through is around weather data. Uh, so in my case, what I need to do is I need to make a call to the server saying, what is the current weather? Now to do that, there's a few different steps. The first part is figuring out where that person is located. And there are multiple different ways that we can do this. But in my case, what I've done is I've utilized the IP address of the user to do a lookup of their IP address to find out what their location is. So in my case here, let's just quickly run through the code. So we've got uh, looking up the IP address to start with. That is going through a few different steps to find the actual IP address of the user. We're then specifying a default location in case we can't find the IP address or can't find the location of the user. We're then running through, if we've found an IP address, we're running through this website, which is geoiplookup.net. Now this site effectively allows you to look up different uh, URLs. So in our case here, uh, I'm just gonna do it. I've got a dummy, uh, a dummy different uh, IP address in here, which is 123.12.123.123. And this website allows us to see that this IP address is from uh, China in Beijing. And so we can see that uh, when you look up this IP address, this is what the information shows. And so any IP address you put into here, it will show whatever it thinks it is. And so in our case, we're utilizing the API of this to then query, well, what's the city and what's the country that this user is located in? And with this information, we can then query a weather API. So we're running through, we're querying this specific URL, which just gives us this XML response that we see here. And then we're going through and effectively bring the results in. If we manage to find the piece of data that we expect, then we generate a new location value from the city and the name that it's found. Then we're going through and querying another API. I know, APIs inside APIs, it's crazy, right? Well, now we're querying a weather API. So this weather API is weatherapi.com. Uh, it seems pretty decent, to be honest. Um, pretty cheap as well. Uh, for this example, it's a great little piece to utilize. So when we query the weather API, there's a few different endpoints you can query. In our case, we're gonna be utilizing just the current weather API. But in this, we get a whole range of different information and we can take advantage of this or we could choose just not to show piece, bits and pieces. And in our case, what we're gonna be showing is the temperature C, the temperature Celsius value, and also the condition text. But you're not limited to this. This in, in my case here, I'm building it specifically to handle this. And just to clarify the condition text, it's like saying like sunny or cloudy or clear, things like that. So what we're doing is we're running a specific URL here which takes the weather API's endpoint of current, puts in our key, puts in a location value, and then sends off the query using curl. Now the curl request runs, it's a way to send a, a query to a website via code, and then we get this response back. And the response is a JSON string. So what we need to do is we need to decode the JSON so that we have a response uh, object. Now I called it response array, that's my bad. It's actually a response object once we JSON decode it. We're then setting a default output, as in if we for some reason don't get any further output, this is the default values that we're going to send through the API. 
as the response. We then have a bunch of just data checks and, and I'll go through exactly what all this is, but basically in our Unity project, these are valid different versions of temperature that we expect to get. And we just need to make sure that any value we send back matches one of these. And so this is all the valid options. And so then if we go into the response itself, we can then go through and see, hey, is that style that we're looking for, like sunny, cloudy, is it actually a valid option? And if it's not, well, what's the value that I've received and what am I mapping that to? Now, I've done a few different maps here and you can see it's a, it's a handful, maybe a dozen. Um, there are a lot on this API. So if we look at the API here and we can scroll down to the bottom, uh, it refers to the condition list and I'll just bring this up uh, in JSON format. So in here we have things like when it's daytime and this is the code that's matched, it's sunny. If it's nighttime, it's clear, and then it goes down, 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 <laughs> and it keeps going. It keeps going for ages. So I've mapped some of these. Honestly, there are a lot more that you could map, um, but I, you'll see, I, I just gave up after a while because it's just so intense. So anyway, if it matches one of these ones that uh, don't exist, then it's gonna set the style to whatever I mapped it to. So as an example, clear is utilized at nighttime, uh, I changed that to moon because that's one that closely relates in my mind. And then ultimately what we're doing is we're providing the values back into that original data response array, JSON encoding it and sending that data off for Unity to utilize. And that's it. That's the entirety of the uh, server side in order to get this project going. So let's move on to the Unity side of things. Now, Unity-wise, what we're doing is we're taking Vuephoria in order to have an image target that we can scan to see something, as well as having some elements that are always sitting on the screen. So in our case here, what we have is in the left side structure here, we have the AR camera, we have a canvas, which is set to uh, be the entire device size which inside that we have different pieces of data. We also have an image target, which has some objects inside it, which if you were looking, paying attention before with the switch statements, you can see cloud at night, you can see cloudy, you can see fog. And that was me mapping to each of these different 3D objects that we can see here in front of us. So in this scene here, this is a big mess at the moment, but if I turn all these off and just leave one on, we can see that this is a cloud at night or we can see uh, that this one's a cloud with a sun in it, so it's cloudy and sunny. Or we have uh, that it's foggy, as an example. And these are our different uh, pieces of ways that we're gonna visualize to the user what the actual weather is at the moment. And so with that visualization, uh, through the 3D object side of things, we're also going to be showing them and this doesn't look pretty at the moment, but we're also gonna be showing in the top left here, the location, a refresh button, which allows them to just force refresh in case they wanna see if the weather's updated. And also in the bottom right, the temperature that they're gonna have. So these pieces all together uh, then mapped on this left side here. So we have that location text, which is up the top left. We have the temperature text in the bottom right, and we have the button in the top right. Did I say top right for the temperature text? I meant bottom right. And so those are the elements then that we're gonna be showing as our actual canvas that comes out to the phone. So those elements are always gonna be sitting there. What we're gonna be using the augmented reality for is to then show these 3D objects that are the different types of weather themselves. So what we need to do is we then need to write scripts in order to query the server to then change the information shown on the screen space, as well as change which model we're actually gonna be showing. So let's go ahead and go through that next. Okay, so let's go through now the actual scripting side of things to get the server call from the API and bring it into Unity itself. Now in our case here, we're gonna have all these different objects that we saw on the main scene there. We're gonna make them all public game objects in this public class called server call. Now this is gonna allow us to effectively turn them on and off when they're called. 
Along with this, we're gonna also include the visual temperature and the visual location in these calls. So again, we can update those as we go with the server call. So when someone loads the app, what we wanna do is we initially wanna just call the server straight away to get updated data. So firstly, in our start void here, we're gonna be running a reset data function and then go through a coroutine that's called get server data. So firstly, the reset data, what do you think that's doing? It's clearing all the data. That is, it's deleting any visual temperature, location, and turning all the different uh, elements, all the different objects to be false. And so we run through that, we get everything into a clean state ready to go. Then we go through and get the server data. So we run through the get server data process here. In our case here, we're running through uh, this same URL that we did before. We're also just running, uh, adding a random value onto the end. And this is simply for cache busting. So my server that I utilize has very hardcore caching on it. So this is the easiest way in my mind to get around this. Uh, we're running through this. We're logging if there's an error for some reason, and we're just going to debug log that. But if we run no error, then what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be uh, taking the text that came back from the response. And in our case here, we've created it into a JSON string. So we're going to call the string JSON. We're then debugging it. So just so we can see what the value came through in Unity itself. And then we're bringing this into a weather object. So let me sidestep into another script now, which is called weather. And we have a public class here, which is a weather class, and where we've signified that there are three strings in it. There is a public string location, public string style, and temp, which is the same three strings that we set up in that script initially. So no matter what, we're always gonna get these results back. It's just whether they're filled in or not from the actual process of the server. So what we're doing then is we're taking the JSON response that we received, putting it into a weather value or a weather object called weather item. With this weather item in hand, what we're able to do is firstly update the visual location text to whatever the location value is. We're able to update the text in the temperature as well. And we're just going to amend the current temp at the start of it so it gives some context to it rather than just saying the number 20. And then we can run another function called update weather model where we're sending through the weather item style. And what this is effectively doing is a, G, a big long switch statement to go through, well, the style that's been sent through from this previous call, let's go through, find the case that it matches, set that object to true, and then return. And if for some reason we don't find an object out of all that, we've got a default temperature uh, object in there that we can always uh, call back on. But this is effectively the entire process then. So it's going through, going back to the top here, it's going through, it's resetting the data first, then it's running and getting the data from the server. It's then updating visually on the front end to the user with the new information. And that in a nutshell is the process behind the scripting. And the only part you need to remember is in Unity itself then, you need to have the script brought in. So in our case, we have this script manager game object which we just dragged the server call script onto we then just need to associate each of the objects on uh, each of these objects to it so that is literally clicking dragging and putting it on each one so you just need to do that for each of these as well as for the text values as well once you have all that together if we hit play here we should get uh, the temperature along with uh, the the current temperature so we can see Geelong Australia the current temp is 18 and if I hold up the image target that we're utilizing into frame we get that it's also raining and it is very light rain outside <laughs> but it is slightly raining and so that's the whole process to getting our app in order so let's go through run a quick example on the phone <laughs> Okay, so now that we've got the phone uh, app built out, we can load it up on the phone itself and we can see what comes out. So initially we should expect that in the top left we get the location, in the bottom right we get the temperature. So we can see here currently in Melbourne, Australia, it's 17 degrees. And if we scan our image target, we can see that it is nighttime. So if we went ahead and hit refresh now in the top right, we should effectively get the same values because it's been a minute. 
not even a minute it's been 10 seconds and so what a what we can do here to demonstrate then different users loading the app from different locations is we've built in this uh, location override so I'm gonna go uh, London United Kingdom and I'm just gonna force the value so that if any user loads the app right now that's the value that they would get so we're gonna hit refresh on this value and we should see London United Kingdom in the top left and the current temperature is 9 degrees and it's apparently sunny sunny and 9 degrees pretty cold to be honest <laughs> and if we now change that value again so let's make it uh, Pittsburgh Pittsburgh United States and hit save same deal if we hit refresh again it's gonna force the values to update to Pittsburgh United States and the current temperature is 6.7 with a lot of zeros at the end I'm not exactly sure why it's uh, providing that in the service and it's apparently also nighttime. It must be pretty close to daytime at this stage, to be honest. What is it? It's 5.39 a.m. That's, uh, yeah, a little bit early. But anyway, we can see, uh, and, and it, again, if we clear, if we clear out this location again and hit save, and we hit refresh, we can then see that we're back in Melbourne, Australia. It's nighttime and it's currently 17 degrees. But anyway guys, that's it. That's a quick run through of the app in action. And so that's it guys. We've gone through, we've created the server, we've created the Unity project, we hooked it up through a Vuforia account and now we have a working solution that looks at the server for real-time data, displays something out to the user through augmented reality. Guys, there are so many different routes that you can use to take this to build your own augmented reality project, and this is just one example. If you have any other ideas, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. Anyway guys, until next time, peace.